Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for the organizers to the 25th time in a row. Uh, I'm, I'm uh, really grateful for, for the, uh, to the organizers to have a possibility to be with you and, and to share some ideas about uh, Croatian presidency and current uh, uh, post-pandemia crisis or pandemia crisis or second wave of crisis attending or whatever. And, and uh, to, let me also at, at the beginning thank to the Institute of Advanced Studies from Kursek as well as to Professor Mišlovic, Mišlovic for, for uh, their extraordinary endeavor and, and, and uh, effectiveness in, in providing uh, the 25th uh, summer academia in, in, in such uh, new circumstances. Uh, they have entered this new open, I suppose. So, dear colleagues and participants, let me start with my presentation for today. Next page, please. I would, I would like to, to inform you first with the contents of my presentation of today. There are um, uh, four, four issues that I'd like to, to mention during this very presentation. Could I have the page with contents? This is the second page. Thank you. Well, uh, obviously I have the introduction and some conclusions, but uh, in introduction I would like to to, to, to uh, underline and, and present how do we see in Croatia, where do we stand as the European Union? Secondly, I'd like to share with you some, some of the outcomes of the Croatian presidency to the European Union, which is just uh, in uh, last phase, I mean, which is to be finalized uh, in last days of June, uh, since from 1st of July, uh, Germany will preside uh, humbly. And then uh, third point is, where do we go from here? It is not only the German presidency, it's uh, more in the mid run, since in the long run we are all dead, as Maynard Keynes has mentioned seriously. So uh, after this, I will have some conclusions. Well, uh, coming back to the first point of my uh, presentation, or, or the second point, yes, the introduction. Well, where do we stand? I mean, uh, uh, the European Union is very different today. It is not resembling to something which we called or, or we all uh, talked about Europe whole and free. It was the era of, of falling of the Berlin Wall and, and it was proclaimed immediately. Europe whole and free. I mean, today it's a bit uh, different. It's, it's uh, more... Uh, more subjects are within the European Union, more member states are within the Union, more countries are around the Union, uh, leaning towards the European Union. However, it is still not Europe whole and free. However, today we are, we are, uh, uh, we are uh, here uh, sharing uh, dilemmas and, and uh, challenges of at least triple crisis. Uh, we have economic and financial crisis, we have uh, migrant crisis, and we cope with also with pandemia crisis, terrible one. Not to mention here Brexit or, or energy and climate issues, green, green plan, of course, or never-ending dilemmas of EU deepening and widening. So, so these are the crossroads. These are the, the, the bunch of challenges that we are coping with all of the time, particularly in 2020 and on. Uh, next page, please. Uh, that is how uh, even the Croatian presidency have started. I mean, uh, at the very beginning, or even before the beginning, during our preparations, uh, it comes. It has come to our mind to 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 have a, um, I would say, proactive logo, a strong Europe in a world of challenges. Of course, nobody knew, neither in Croatia, that there would be this uh, terrible pandemia coming suddenly from somewhere, from anywhere. But uh, anyhow, our priorities were really, really, I'd say, in-depth challenges. Uh, we, we were uh, voting or we were hoping for Europe that develops, Europe that contacts, Europe that protects, and influential Europe. 
uh, uh, Europe that develops, we were hoping to, to have or, or to, to work on uh, more balanced, more sustainable and inclusive Europe. Uh, that one point. The other point was uh, uh, to, to, to widen the scope of uh, Europe that connects. Uh, that would be Europe connecting by traffic, by energy, but also by uh, digitalization. Uh, third point was Europe that protects. It, it has been uh, Europe that protects its citizens. It protects internally and externally. We were dealing with internal security as well as uh, external security strengthening internally to be stronger externally. Um, and, and maybe the last of those four points, four priority points was more influential Europe, leaning towards more, more influential Europe, mean, meaning uh, uh, more influential in its uh, uh, closest neighborhood, but as well as globally. I mean, uh, uh, we, we wanted to revive somehow uh, the, the, the global role of, of the European Union. In this respect, yes, thanks. Yeah, but suddenly uh, COVID-19 pandemic prevailed. Well, uh, unfortunately, it was accompanied in Croatia with the most terrible earthquake in Zagreb that happened on 22nd of March, 6.30 in the morning, terrible. Okay, but even in these circumstances, there are at least three lessons that we have learned uh, or, or uh, three ways of of, of coping with, with the uh, new challenges. First of all, video or digital diplomacy has prevailed. I mean, even today we are here in this video screening and, and where we are using these digital uh, appliances and so on. So video diplomacy has become a regular channel of, diploma, of diplomatic communication. Um, some would say traditional diplomacy has been changed by video diplomacy, but let's say video diplomacy as a way, as a mechanism, as, as, uh, as a way of conveying uh, diplomatic communication. So that is why we have this new, new, new regular channel. Secondly, crisis management. It has become a, a regular part of everyday job. I mean, uh, crisis management, it was introduced and coordinated with two systems. One large system of EU institutions in Brussels, as well as a diplomatic system of, um, uh, uh, of Croatia uh, in Zagreb. And it was also carried out with all uh, member states' diplomacies. So crisis management, introducing all the factors and actors of the European Union on, on institutional level in Brussels, as well as, uh, uh, I mean, also, it's always the people, but at the institutional level in Brussels, as well as in, in Zagreb as a presiding member state, as well as in other member states. And then uh, uh, by acting uh, through video and through these crisis management channels, uh, we have become, I would say, most or more proactive and flexible in functioning. And, and that was needed. And I, I, I presume we did it since you'll see some of the results that I will show you a bit later. Then teamwork. It was extremely important at all the levels in all the nations from Budapest uh, here to, to, to Zagreb to, to, to capital, our joint capital of Brussels. And then, uh, of course, a lot of enthusiasm, collective and individual. It was really needed and uh, it was accomplished, I'd say so. So it was accomplished since uh, it was an early warning from Croatia. I'm, I'm, although uh, uh, it, it has been a, a sad and, and a worrying situation, but already on 28th of January, Croatia has initialed uh, uh, and asked uh, uh, the, the, the EU institutions to start with, especially EAS, to start integrated political crisis response. It is a special mechanism which, which functions, which was hoped to be functional in, in the era of crisis, and it has, it has shown quite functional. But uh, we started asking and we started officially the EAS to start the IPCR mechanism already on 28th of January, this very year, of course. 
And uh, we have started exchanging information through this uh, mechanism of IPCR uh, already at the end of January. Uh, just 10 days later, 7th February, there was a high level video conference on health, on health, uh, on health issues. And, and there are already certain, certain uh, 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 warnings and ideas how to cope with uh, new challenges were, were uh, on the table. Uh, already a week later, uh, the EPSICO the Council on Health uh, has discussed uh, in a more thorough way uh, uh, what is going on, what, what is happening. And it was based on the presidency uh, discussion paper. Uh, I mean, discussion paper pre uh, prepared and, and presented by Croatian presidents. And then afterwards, on 2nd of March, this mechanism of, of IPCR has become fully active. And it functions still today with permanent reporting and weekly roundtables. So this was the, the initialing of, of the EU uh, common response to, to the new extraordinary challenge of uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Well, next, please. In this, in this respect, uh, uh, Croatia has had uh, some operational contributions, I would, I would say. Uh, during our presidency, uh, first of all, we have introduced and, and we were presiding continuously on round tables of ICPR on a weekly basis. So it has become um, an, an obligatory uh, uh, meeting where, where all the member states are, and as well as the institutions included, uh, EU institutions included, were discussing a, 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 the, 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 the issue on a weekly basis. Secondly, uh, Croatia, Croatian presidency was presiding on corporate meetings. It was again, on a weekly basis, Corriper 1 and Corriper 2 as well. But uh, it has been accomplished in continuo, partly in vivo uh, in Brussels, but mostly through video uh, and, and other our communication channels, uh, technical communication channels. And then uh, thirdly, I'd say we were holding all the time bilateral consultations, ministerial, but also prime minister, but also all other uh, diplomatic uh, and other levels uh, with member states uh, permanently. So these three uh, interconnection of uh, early warning mechanism 5CPR uh, with regular core per meeting and, and uh, communication with member states has contributed to what I say, uh, uh, what I have uh, put the title on uh, Croatian presidency's uh, political achievements. Without all these um, active, uh, less attractive uh, uh, communications through those uh, three regular channels of the European Union, those achievements could not be accomplished. So first one is coping with the, the, the pandemia or with pandemic. Uh, which was really put on the top of EU agenda all of the time. Not neglecting and not forgetting all the other issues, but uh, the, the fight against pandemic, particularly common putting things together and, and being more joint in our activities and with common approach, it has become the, the priority of all priorities. But with all this, we've, we've been doing a number of other things. For example, these ICPR activities uh, that were introduced, they have enabled a number of things. First of all, closer operational cooperation of member states, of the Council, and of the European Commission. So everybody was involved, all the levels, uh, individually and, and collectively. Then uh, a number of things have been done in coordinated repatriation and, and transit of EU citizens in this terrible uh, period of time. Uh, we have uh, experienced a number of different cases of, of people coming, asking, uh, asking with no clear ideas where to go, how to move uh, from, from point A to point B, passing through Budapest, for example, 
and and we did a lot uh, on 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 direct uh, in this very very direct um, uh, they would say ordinary consular activities but i would say very very uh, uh, important and and in-depth diplomatic task of dealing with uh, croatian citizens who were in need and all the other member states did a lot uh, a number of efforts in this uh, enabling this repatriation and transit uh, being smoothly provided uh, i would like to thank also here once again Croatia, uh, hungarian authorities for understanding the situation and being with us all the time uh, third point of icpr activities would be introducing continuous video conferencing uh, conferencing uh, in all the council formats and in most of the fields or all of the fields so it means we were dealing uh, uh, we were using video conferencing for for better understanding in the field of health justice home foreign and general affairs uh, security defense transport not to mention everything it's all put on 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 on, on this slide um, by saying this i would go further saying that uh, certain per political uh, uh, achievements could be could be also uh, mentioned as as a um, uh, certain uh, breakthrough regarding mff which is the most important uh, um, budget instrument of, of of the european union for uh, the next period of 21 27 and then the, the introduce the introducing of recovery fund uh, the official title is next generation eu instrument uh, so those two uh, uh, instruments uh, were aligned with european commission uh croatian president was, was was directly involved in all of this and it brings step by step member states uh, uh, even closer it's uh, it's it's an uh, it's an uh, overwhelming and and uh, complex uh, task so it is still not finished but we still have enough time and and hopefully these days just these day, uh, these in the days of june uh, there is a, a at the end of june uh, eu summit will provide some additional points regarding to this uh, but it is the most important uh, task task of all the tasks i would say then brexit uh, uh, when croatia started presidency the withdrawal agreement has been accomplished already however from the agreement to new partnership uh, framework and collaboration there is a way so we are passing this way uh, three rounds of negotiations have been held and uh, hopefully we are coming to to, to some understanding uh, um, on one hand there are just a couple of things to be done still regarding the the agreement that would be mutually uh, uh, understandable and mutually uh, accomplished uh, and but but on the other hand those small things are making th things big so so we'll see how it will go on but we are on the right path and we are i would say in in alignment with all the other member states that as well as with the uk that that there is a need of of a regular uh, brexit uh, western balkans is seems to be one of the success stories of our presidency uh, most of you are uh, most of you do understand what does it mean to have a clear eu perspective in your eu member states however uh, it was it was zagreb summit and zagreb declaration that has provided really a clear eu perspective for all the states of the western balkans so those seven states are now functioning in some another way uh, uh, with, with, with new breeze coming from Brussels, coming from member states. And I hope that, that the path is now even, even stronger and, and even more vivid. On the other hand, Eastern neighborhood countries have been reconfirmed as an integral, an, an integral part of uh, EU agenda, uh, a summit uh, of, 
of uh, was held in Brussels uh, of Eastern neighborhood as well as of the EU member states. So there is a declaration of June which reconfirms uh, uh, the ideas of, uh, of ever getting closer with Eastern neighborhood countries. Uh, so where do we go from here? All what we have mentioned uh, was was uh, a kind of uh, passing through the archives, looking looking back. But uh, looking ahead is always more more interesting. But but on the other hand, uh, is it is it thorough as it is when you speak about something that has already happened and that has been accomplished? So let me speculate a bit. Uh, first of all, uh, being you know. Under, under the umbrella of, of COVID pandemic for the last couple of months, as, as, all of, as all of you are. Also, I'd say with or without this possible second way of COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the, the basic point, the basic start, the basic and starting point from where do we go from here as the European Union, is the introduction of a new uh, multi uh, multi annual uh, uh, financial uh, multi annual uh, financial framework as well as of recovery fund those two legs of 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 uh, of further budgeting of the member states by by common eu uh, funds are 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 uh, uh, basic and, and strongest prerequisite for for the European Union that we want in in the period to come, and uh, in this respect, we would like to have uh, the European at least this is the point of Croatia to have the European Union that engages with more responsibility and solidarity. Responsibility and solidarity are not only the words. Uh, responsibility on one hand means that that you should be responsible to your uh, people, to your nation, but you should be responsible to the European Union as well. I mean, this is a communicated vessel thing. This is a, a two-way street. There is no one-way street in, in the European Union as it was envisaged and as it was functioning until now. So for better functioning, more responsibility towards your peoples, but to all the EU peoples, as well as solidarity. It is very important in such uh, challenging periods of time as, as current uh, period is. On the other hand, we should be more effective and more resilient and more sustainable. Uh, it's easy to say, but, but it is not so hard to, to, to raise the effectiveness. It is not so hard to, to, to act uh, thoroughly and then to have more resilience and even sustainability. Um, I could go in Q&A part more with this, but uh, the next point would be we should be more pragmatic in our, our operations of the European Union, not somewhere in the, in the, in, in the space uh, too lunatic. I mean, uh, uh, we should have pragmatic bottom-up models of functioning. Uh, we should we should care more about uh, the real, particular, practical citizen, concrete citizens' needs. Uh, that is the future of on Europe conference. I'll talk about this later on. And then, uh, obviously, the crisis management has been uh, become uh, has become a part of regular has become a regular mechanism and has become a regular policy. Uh, it is not something which comes suddenly uh, from here, there, to everywhere, but it is something which, which has become a part of everyday routine in diplomacy, but also in everyday life. So crisis management is not something which, which should, we should be uh, too worried about, which is something, something absolutely different. No, it's a part of our everyday, everyday work and even routine, I'd say, in a positive manner routine I'm mentioning. Well, uh, next regarding where do we go or where we should go is, let's recall a bit uh, about this uh, united we stand, divided we fall. 
I mean, it was uh, recalled a couple of years ago on Malta, Malta summit in 2017 by Donald Tusk, but it was previously mentioned in a very tricky period of time by Sir Winston Churchill in 1941, United Stand Divide and Fall, thinking of some other things being together with United States in forthcoming years of Second World War War. But basically it was Aesop, always someone from ancient Greece or Rome are to be blamed for. And, and it was a, a brave Aesop who was speaking about uh, Greek of that time, united in stand, divided in four. So that was his essentially uh, proverb. And uh, it, it suits to today's uh, triggering and, and challenging period of time. Since the lessons of crisis management and communication in the last couple of months should be the following. First of all, uh, there was a, a negative perception moving around, as well as negative discourse of selfish, self-oriented member states. Uh, yes, but for all of the things I'll, I'll mention here, one, two, three, it's always yes, but. So uh, regarding this, of course, each and every country was taking care about citizens. But you should not neglect also a number of uh, activities that each and every member state has been done in providing, for example, uh, uh, free transport or, or safe transit uh, for, for a number of person personalities from uh, European Union, from other European Union member states, as well as from here, there and everywhere. So this negative perception and, and, and discourse is having at least A and B side. Then uh, it has become obvious uh, through the crisis that we passed uh, with, with this first uh, stroke of, of COVID that unilateral measures are not enough. Uh, yes, uh, uh, some of the countries were, were morally lining on, on, the, on themselves exclusively, but let's, let's memo somehow, let's keep in mind that by entering the European Union, we have uh, uh, one of the prerequisites is also to share some of our sovereignty. It doesn't mean it is a, uh, it doesn't mean uh, in second point that it is the federation or not federation, is is it uh, or, or some new creation? But uh, do not forget that uh, being a part of the European Union means also that you should share some of your uh, direct responsibilities. Of course, that some of the the, the, the fields or of occupation or activities uh, are uh, even better accomplished on the lower level, meaning in, in uh, each and any of the member states, but as well as it could go that uh, some of the things you could do better on municipality level than on uh, regional level or on state level. So it is an ongoing discussion either to go this way or that way, but uh, we should not uh, forget that by entering the European Union, we have shared our sovereignty all with uh, all of us with all the others so so we are all sharing the sovereignty last point i would like to mention from these lessons of crisis management communication in the last couple of months would be absolutely that there is a need for more coordination of national and eu measures and to find the balance would mean that we are we are uh, optimizing this solidarity and flexibility in decision making and cooperation. Next, <coughs> there are some particularly important EU issues that are to be tackled in the in the very period of time uh, which we are ahead. Let me first tackle the issue of MFF. Uh, multi-financial framework is very important one. Uh, uh, it encompasses basic, but not only basic, development needs of member states, 
but it goes from recovery to growth to growth and to cohesion and it is you, you, it is even not easy to to read the amount of more than 1000 billions of euros uh, that is dedicated to this very funding and then there is a recovery fund which is uh, on the let's say two thirds of the of the amount but nevertheless it is an instrument for recovery and for fighting against the 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 the, the, the outcomes of pandemia with with and it is also the element of creating a post-Brexit post, post uh, reshuffling of, of the resources uh, in the EU27. And, and it is also uh, uh, funding for renewed cohesion in those new parameters and, and uh, having in mind the economic and social strength or, 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 or uh, intrigues. So, so in this very sense, uh, these two elements are extremely important. Also, the new EU partnership with UK, but uh, we'll see how it goes on further. Next, next would be the rule of law, which is a, a cornerstone of, of, of EU functioning. And there is a continuous discussion within EU institutions in or among member states. And the first annual uh, rule of law report is to be offered in September by, by uh, the EU institutions. So we'll see how we'll go on further. Uh, last but not least, Conference on Future of Europe. It is a new mechanism to be created. It's under construction now. Uh, it's a mechanism, I would say, on tra of transparency and understanding. Uh, it should enable uh, all the, from individuals, individual people, to 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 some some collective uh, levels of, at municipality, regional or national level, as well as at, at the, the big European level. How how to keep how to keep pace with with a, a series of needs and interests, uh, cultures, uh, ideas, basically of citizens. So it is a new mechanism which will enable us to understand better where we are and and how to and then to create mechanisms how to cope with uh, the key challenges that we'll find out. It will tackle a series of issues, fields of occupation, activities, and so on. Uh, unfortunately, it, it has not started on 9 of May in Dubrovnik, uh, Croatian city of, of, of uh, liberty, uh, which has had its historical flag where the, the insignia of liberty was even uh, put on in the medieval times. Uh, well, uh, not the 9 of May was was the start of of uh, of uh, the conference on future of Europe. However, we'll continue in the autumn and and have a more articulated uh, idea where to go and how to go. It will include not only citizens, not only groups of people, not only interested groups, but also it will include also more uh, effectively, I hope. Uh, the parliamentary dimension, which is sometimes neglected, this and that, but it is a, a message from the bottom, uh, willingly, less willingly. Okay. So, having said all this, I will come to to some ending. Uh, I think I, I'll, I'll, uh, I have brought you closer uh, uh, the dilemmas, but even the outcomes of Croatian presidency and, and and try to tackle also the issues that we are going to cope with in the immediate future but to conclude let's face the new normal this is the new phrasing new normal this is the phrasing for the current period of time that we are entering and we are already living and working uh, with um, but this uh, new normal should also uh, put uh, this united we stand, divided we fall, uh, I'd say, continuous logo of, of the European Union 
in the current uh, period of time. Uh, in this sense, let me also quote my dear minister, uh, Croatian Minister of Foreign and European Affairs, uh, who recently mentioned at, at uh, a certain June video conference that it is important to maintain the timely information flow as well as to build trust in our uh, capacities to implement relevant measures and protect all of our citizens. This is a, a general, but I'd say direct message of Gordon Grlic Radman, Croatian Minister of uh, Foreign and European Affairs, and I'd say it's good to 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 have the the conclusion with this. With this, uh, I'd say only that we should we should focus further. By saying this, let's focus further on economic recovery and development. This would be our first task, namely new MFF and recovery fund uh, with more solidarity, with more inclusive approach and with fast operationalization. Well, thank you very much. All the best and let's continue.